Welcome, this is Glasgow Raiders Nation, I'm Erin James and this is all your latest Raiders news on what is match day, yes it is match day but it's a really weird match day because it's a Sunday, obviously we're, not, we're used to playing Sundays, you know we're used now to playing on a Sunday because of the fact that of course due to the Europa League we've got a lot of Thursday, Sundays, Thursday, Sundays coming up so we know that, some, that this is going to be the way for quite a considerable time and if we qualify for the knockout stages it's going to continue at least into February but what makes this a very weird Sunday is the fact that the kickoff against St. Johnson at Ibrox, which we were looking forward to, Ibrox, back at Ibrox Stadium, fantastic place to be, one of the best grounds in world football, um, is at eight o'clock on a Sunday. I mean, that is just proper weird on a Sunday. And, and I think when this was scheduled, because of obviously the great Glasgow run or so the great Scottish run or whatever it's called, is taking place today. And um, due to obviously road closures and other things, the game can't go ahead until eight o'clock. It's a, it's a Sunday night, and obviously that restricts travel, it restricts obviously buses, it restricts trains, boats, etc. for Northern Ireland fans coming over. Um, I think it'll affect the crowd. I really do think it will affect the crowd because, of course, uh, 8 o'clock is a very weird time to play a game on a Sunday. I, I can't really remember a game taking place this late on a Sunday anywhere. Um, I know in a person on the continent it does it in Italy. I think I remember watching the odd 8 o'clock kickoff in the uh, in the Derby della Derby della Italia that was the Inter Milan Juventus derby once I think kicked off at that time once on a on a Sunday night I think I remember watching that on the old Gazetta Football Italia on a Saturday those of you who remember back to the days of that um, that wonderful institution of James Richardson and Gaza creating havoc on a Saturday morning and a Sunday afternoon for you um, but uh, yeah eight o'clock is a really weird time obviously that means it finishes at about ten o'clock it's a Sunday night a lot of people have got work the next morning. Um, you know, so it's it's far from ideal. It really is far from ideal. So, you know, I think there probably could have been another solution found this, maybe switch the fixture to St. Johnston, um, you know, and some other solution could have been come up with rather than playing this type, this game at a ridiculously long time, eight o'clock. I mean, I suppose it has the benefit if it gives Rangers players more time to recover after Thursday night. Obviously, St. Johnston have had a full week to prepare, um, having not played in Europe during the week because they're not very good. Um, but, you know, it does give Rangers a chance to obviously, you know, rest, get back, get back at it and perhaps have a training session or two, a recovery session and a training session ahead of the game. Now, right, so look, I addressed this a little bit on the pod last night. If you didn't see it, I just want to address this issue again because I've done a bit more looking into it and it, uh, it's quite a worry, actually. This is this is a real worry. Now, um, on Thursday night, the Union Bears did their usual, obviously, you know, banners and so on and so forth, but they had the pyro show. Obviously, fireworks, flares, etc., etc., in the uh, crowd. Um, after you know, before the game on Thursday, and the even the, the Belgian uh, referee had to actually stop the game. I think on a couple of occasions due to the smoke from the pyro show. Um, now, look, there's one thing that is you know seems to be a thing that the Union Bears do on a regular basis in in these games, these night games. Is have this pyro show, you know, flares and so on and so forth. I mean. The first question I'd ask is, how the bloody hell do you get a flare into a football match? I mean, I know from going to games, you know, down in England as well, you can't get anything into a game. You, you try and get a try and get a plastic bottle into a game, and you've got no chance. You know, absolutely zero chance of getting a plastic bottle into a game, um, let alone getting a flare in. Now, so no, so how the hell do you get a flare in? Now, especially as obviously in Scotland, you can't even buy a beer in the ground. So how the the hell do you get a flare in? I don't know. So, you know, obviously a flare is a whole lot safer than a beer. Again, I'm not quite sure how that one works, but there we go. So the Union Bears get the flares out and this is going to cause the club a bit of trouble. Now, according to reports that are in a number of media sources, uh, UEFA are really, really angry with Rangers and the uh, Union Bears for this pyro show. The uh, match official from UEFA, the uh, guy in the stands, actually included the pyro show at the top of his report, apparently, as a danger and a risk. Now, Rangers fear that there will be consequences as a result of this pyro show from the Union Bears. Um, Servette, uh, Gala and a number of other teams have suffered big fines and have had parts of their ground closed as a result of their fans using pyrotechnics during games. Uh, just this season, Savet, yes, remember then we played them in the Champions League qualifiers last season, um, had a €43,000 fine and had large sections of the end where the pyro display took place closed by the by UEFA for, for future European games and not just one. It was, I think it was a couple of games. So 
Rangers, uh, Rangers obviously are sweating now on the situation where the U where UEFA could, in effect, fine Rangers money. But not only fine Rangers money, but also close part of the stands. Now, obviously, given the whole Copeland Road debacle, where the stand obviously wasn't ready for the start of the season, then only part of it was, a was able to be used against Dundee. Shutting a stand again, but this time not because it's being worked on, it's just going to be, you know, ridiculous. Now, if this happens, you know, it's clear to see that the Union Bears, look, I've got nothing against the Union Bears. They bring a lot, you know, colour, they bring fantastic TFOs, they bring fantastic noise to all the games. I've cost the club money and are going to cost the club more revenue when when parts of the ground are closed down. Also, you know, the fact that Ibrox on a European night is a 12th man. When Ibrox is rocking on a European night, there is very few grounds in world football like it, you know, that can that match up the atmosphere and the intensity and in effect gives the team a 12th man. Now, it looks likely that Rangers will be fined €43,000 and looks likely that parts of Ibrox will be closed down given case precedent. Now, like I said, the precedent is in similar circumstances to these Savet had parts of their ground closed and were fine. Galatasaray the same. I think Besiktas were also there. There's a number of other clubs as well have suffered consequences for their pyro displays. So it does look like there will be a sanction for some of these European games at Ibrox. Now, given the fact that we have four games and, you know, something we do need to do is bring in extra revenue to the club, meaning that, you know, shutting parts of the ground is going to cost the club money. The fine is going to cost the club money as well. Look, I just genuinely think that, that, that some fans need to be a lot more sensible with what they think is and isn't acceptable at a football match. Yes, they look lovely. Yes, it's nice. It, you know, yes, it looks great, but it's dangerous. It's ridiculous and it's stupid because you know that UEFA are going to act against you. You know that UEFA are going to put sanctions in place. Now, when those sanctions affect the club you support, in monetary value and also loss of match day income and affect fans who were not involved in the display, which is very unfair, you've got to think twice about doing this. So, you know, I would call on the Union Bears not to do this again. Please don't take pyros into the games. Now, just forget about it. Bring your TFOs, bring your scarves, bring your, bring your flags, bring all those things, but don't bring flares, fireworks, any of those things, because it's just going to end up costing Rangers money. And this is a club you say you love. Do not cost them money. Do not cause them to have parts of their ground closed down that affects the atmosphere, that affects the attendance, that affects those that weren't involved and will also affect the players as well. You know, not having that huge support behind them in difficult upcoming games. You know, we have got games at home that are going to be difficult. Tottenham at home, for example. You know, if, if that's one of the games where we lose part of the you know stadium to a, a ban, then, you know, that's ridiculous. And it, it, it's, it's pathetic and it really does need to be thought of. And some of these fans need to, you know, take a long, hard look at themselves, give their heads a wobble and not actually do it again. You know, that's what I would actually appeal on them to do. Now, I know that's going to be unpopular with some people. I know some people won't agree with that. And we'll just say, oh, it's just UA for overreacting, being a bunch of, uh, you know, snowflakes. But that, unfortunately, is the rules. And that's the rules we need to follow. OK, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, obviously, a big test of today of what is going on with this club, what is going on with the players obviously, that went off. Apologies, you can hear my dog squeaking his ball in the background. Um, but, you know, one of the things that's going to come up tomorrow, today, sorry, is what team will Philippe Clermont select? How much will he rotate the team? How many changes will he make? What players will he get? What players will miss out? What players won't play? Etc. Etc. Now, one of the big talking points, obviously, is over James Tavernier. Will he play? Will he start? Will he not start after he was hooked off in the 61st minute? against Lyon. Will Cass and Weirjo get to play at all? Now, look, I'm a big fan of this lad. He, he looks a very good footballer. He really does. Now, he can fill in at left back. He can fill in at right back. He looks a top, top talent. You know, you watched him against uh, Lyon when he came on. You've watched him against Malmo. You know, he looks solid. He looks big. He looks quick. He tracks runners well. You know, he plays, he plays a good game defensively as well. And I, and I genuinely think, you know, the fact he's on loan as well, and this could be a player that we're going to buy next season. You know, to take a well-rounded decision, you need to put him in different circumstances against different teams, European, the old firm, this game tomorrow, again, today again against St. Johnston, and have a look at him. And for me, I, I, I really want to see Kasson Weirjo start at right back today in today's game. I don't think he will. 
I think that the manager will stick with Tav at right back. I genuinely do. But Kassan Weirjo, for me, is the more than enough to be selected in this game. And for me, this is one that we really do need to get right. Now, the other one, obviously, is around Janis Hadji. Now, obviously, Janis Hadji has just come back into the first team squad. I honestly feel that, you know, even though he's just come back into the first team squad, he has played B team minutes. He has trained with the B team all season. So he does have some match fitness. Now, obviously, I know that B team football, the under 21, under 18 football, whatever it's been that Hadji's played in, isn't, is it doesn't carry the same intensity, the same aggressiveness, the same pace as A team games. That's just the way things are. I get that, understand that. But, you know, if Yanis Hadji is to get back to his full sharpness and is to get back to full match fitness, he's going to get that by playing minutes. Now, look, Tom Lawrence is injured, OK? Tom Lawrence is out and he's injured. Now, whether he returns, we don't know. But if, he, if, if Lawrence is not able to play, I would honestly start Hadji, even if he can only play 45 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour against St. Johnston. Get him out there, get him playing, get him back in the team, get him reintroduced to the team. This is a lad who can unlock defences. This is a lad who can see a pass. This is a lad who can have a little moment where he can move himself into speed, sp into space, sorry. Find that pass to unlock even the tightest of defences. Now, you know one thing will definitely happen in today's game. It's at Ibrox. St. Johnston will come. They will set up to defend, even with a new manager, uh, Simo Valakare. They will still set up the low block. They will still set up, an in set up to make sure that Rangers can't play through them and try to make this game as difficult as possible for Rangers. This is the game where we need players of class, players of skill, players of talent, like Hadji, like Bayrami, you know, these, like Diamande, that can unlock defences with those killer passes that can thread balls through to the forwards. And for me, Hadji has to play a role, whether that's as a starter or to come on for the last half an hour, 40 minutes, and make a contribution. I really hope that Big Phil can't swallow his pride now, I think he's a man who's stubborn. I think he's a man who finds it difficult to go back on what he said, um, although he does do it quite a lot with some things. And I think, you know, given the attitude he had towards Yanis Hadji um, at the start of the season, I think, you know, it's going to be difficult for Yanis to get back into the squad. But I really hope the manager is ready and willing to give him a fair crack of the whip. And that was, for me, starts today against St. Johnston. Hadji is a top class talent. Now, I know some fans don't agree with that. Some have called him bang average and pish and whatever. Last full season he had for us, 26, 28 goal contributions. A guy who at the Euros was one of the best players on Romania's team against some tough opposition. You don't do that if you're a rubbish player. You don't do that if you're an average footballer. I think some of the fans towards Yanis Hadji have got a very, very short memory. So I really want to see Yanis have a part to play today in today's game. Look, I think whatever we do today, you know, it's St. Johnston. And, and look, that might sound arrogant, that might sound complacent, but it's St. Johnston. It's not like St. Johnston are a powerhouse of Scottish football. It's not like St. Johnston are going to come here and outplay us. It's not like they're going to come here and have a go at us. It's not like they're going to come here and cause us a lot of trouble. That's just not going to happen, OK? So, look, at the end of the day, um, you know, St. Johnston our team we've got to be beaten. We've got to be putting away and we've got to be putting away convincingly. So whatever happens, you know, we're going into the international break now. Okay. The players, some players obviously will go off to play for their countries. Others will obviously just be Ock and Howie for the next week and a bit whilst this international break is in progress, another boring international break. So for me today, we go with our strongest team and we go at them from minute one, which we push it. We do everything we didn't do on Thursday night, everything we didn't do last Sunday, Everything we did do against Malmo the week before, we go out and do, and we leave nothing on the pitch. That's the only way forward. Look, the fans are getting very frustrated, I think, after that performance on Thursday. There is an anger there. There is an unsettling unsettlement amongst the fans at this moment in time. You know, and look, does a win against St. Johnston change everything? Does it make everyone happier? No, it makes people happier because it's a win. Of course it does. Does it put all the problems right? No, of course it doesn't. You know, Sigurdessa scores a hat-trick tomorrow. Does that make him... An outstanding striker, one of the best. No, of course it doesn't. It's St. Johnston. But at least it's short term, isn't it? It's putting things in the right place going into the international break, giving us something to work on going into the international break. And, you know, given the fact that, you know, we're at the moment sitting here five points behind them with obviously Aberdeen and Celtic also playing today, you know, it, it's a case of just getting it right. It's a case of making sure we keep that gap down to five. We don't let it get any bigger. 
and we keep the pressure on. Whatever happens between now and the next Old Firm game in January, we've got to win every single game for me. There can be no slip-ups. It's got to be 100% from now till that next Old Firm. Guys, let me know what you think. Score predictions, what you think about today's game, what you fears are etc etc going into this uh, game today against St Johnston you know Clemon has got to get this team focused get this team ready and get this team ready to go today against St Johnston and realistically I don't want to see Tav's name on the team sheet I don't want to see Kieran Dow's name on the team sheet under any circumstances now I, I prefer we don't want to see Vaslav Cherny's but we are probably going to see him because he's a lone player and he's going to play him even though he doesn't work the same with Cass which is very confusing so Today, it's about winning. 2-0, I think, to Rangers. I don't think it's going to be a classic. St. Johnston won't allow it. They'll break play up. They'll slow it down. They'll foul. They'll spoil. They'll take six hours over goal kicks and throw-ins. They'll do as much as they can to break up the flow of the game. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Obviously, today we've got a big day on the channel. Um, we'll obviously bring you breaking team news once it comes out. We'll bring you the live watch-along as well from, from just before 8 o'clock. You know, it's been a pleasure speaking to you here, as always, here on Glasgow Rangers Nation. Thank you for watching. Please obviously smash the sub, help the channel to keep on growing. Smash the like, drop me a comment, all that good stuff, guys, to keep this channel moving forward and help this video to grow. Thanks for watching. We are the people.